Milling Through History presents Jumonville Glen. The French and Indian War was the final conflict between England and France in the North American continent, namely because, after years of fighting, it became very clear to the English that the only way they could ever ensure that they would no longer have to deal with France in the New World was to effectively get rid of them once and for all. However, while the English had come up with this particular strategy, they still needed an event which would start a war and therefore allow them to go ahead and fulfill their own desires. As such, little did they realize that a young Virginian would go ahead and give them the catalyst necessary to go ahead and implement their plan. To better understand this, we must first set the stage. Western movement between the English and the French would lead their own individual traders to encounter each other inside of the Ohio Valley. For the French, Ohio was the place to go in order to get new furs for trade. However, with the arrival of English settlers, they realized that it was only a matter of time before conflict would occur, and thus wanted to push the English out before anything, any large numbers could get in. By contrast, the English had already formed a group called the Ohio Company and were beginning to settle the valley as was part of their charter. Seeing that there was potential conflict, Governor Dinwiddie of Virginia would order George Washington, otherwise unknown at that time, to go to Fort Leboeuf, the major French stronghold in the region, and order the French to leave what was English territory. Upon his arrival there, though, Washington got the sense the French had no intention of leaving and even saw war canoes being built, and thus realizing invasion was what was in the mind of the French. Returning to Williamsburg, Washington would give his report to Dinwiddie, and, as such, Dinwiddie would order William Trent to build a fort at the Three Forks, which is modern-day Pittsburgh. On April the 16th, 1754, 500 Frenchmen would arrive and take over the fort being constructed by Trent. As for George Washington, the governor would instruct him to raise a force and go out into the frontier to prevent the French from advancing into English territory. Historians have argued about Dinwiddie's orders and have noted that they were specifically vague and thus creating an invitation for war. As Washington was on the move, he would receive word that the French had taken over the Three Forks, and he would move his army as close as possible to that location, arriving in a location referred to as the Great Meadows. There, Washington would begin to build a fort. On May the 27th, 1754, Washington would receive word from Christopher Gist that a force of 50 Frenchmen were nearby. Washington and 40 men were went out to find these Frenchmen and were met by Tanaxarian, who had found the encampment and led the Virginians over towards it. When Washington arrived, he would find the French still asleep and begin to wake up. Having surrounded their position, when the alarm was called, the shots rang out, and thus the precursor for war. The battle itself lasted for approximately 15 minutes, but the details of it are still greatly debated even to this day. What is known is that the French were caught off guard, and one of the officers, Jumonville, was killed, most likely by Tonixarian. While the grisly details of his death are not necessarily need to be shared at this time, what is important to note, though, is that the death of Jumonville was immediately being said to have been an assassination of a French ambassador. Washington, sensing that there could be trouble on the horizon, quickly returned his men to the Great Meadow and would hurry in the completion of his fort, which was now being referred to as Fort Necessity. On June the 28th, 1754, a force of 600 French, Canadian, and Indian soldiers would march on Fort Necessity. And after fighting for a number of days, on July the 3rd, 1754, George Washington was forced to surrender his fort and in signing the treaty document, he would end up admitting that he had assassinated Jumonville. Now, Washington had said he never knew exactly what was on the document, as it was written in French, and never wanted to admit it that he himself did not know how to read French. 
But some historians have pointed out that the word assassinate was rather clear, as it is both written and spelled the same way in both English and French. Now be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History. And be sure to leave comments below for future episode ideas. And make sure to take a look at our suggested reading page.